You're watching the Val Jones show. You're watching the Val Jones show. Oh, new! You asked for it, so we're giving it to you. We're traveling the world, finding the most fascinating everyday people. This week, we sit down with a man who wasn't afraid to break barriers to be true to who he was. I was teased and mocked. This is who I am. You better deal with That's it. Dead. And I said, if you have to excommunicate me, you go right ahead. And Do you know anyone uh, like you? Who was the first person you told? Brian Bode tells his mind-blowing small town coming out story. Do you know why we picked you for our most fascinating everyday people? I have no idea, but I'm very flattered to be. Why your story is so interesting to us is because coming out at such an age uh, in the 19, early 90s was fascinating. It was a time where a lot of people did not accept being gay as being the norm. A lot of people were angry at gays. There was a lot of gay bashings. There was a lot of gay people that did not feel comfortable comfortable coming out, but you did. I sure did. I sure did. And I'm like, yes, I had I had no problem. Um, I was worried about coming out, but I mean, and you would think if anybody was going to be gay bash, it would have been me coming from a small town. Coming. And That's what we found interesting too. Coming from a small town. Yes. Coming from a Christian background, going to a private Christian school, mm -hmm. just the whole small town mentality yeah. and being able to come out, that takes some power. To a strong person to do something like that. Yes. When did you first know you were gay? I was five years old, I'm sure, and I wanted to wrestle with other boys. And that's when you really Yeah, five, five years old. Five years old. When was how I was. No, when you say five, what kind of, what was your mindset when you're five? What, how did you know you were I just knew, you I, different. I, you want, knew you different. I wanted to wrestle with another boy. I wanted to, I wanted to like grab his waist and just roll around with him <laughs> on the floor and, you know, feel him, feel him. I wanted, that's what I thought was exciting. I, I wanted to do that. I wanted, yeah. So you never had any feelings towards any girls? Well, I guess I, um, I remember this one girl, she smelled good and I loved her little yellow, her <laughs> yellow jacket. Her yellow jacket was so cute. And I loved her yellow jacket. I mean, it was... You loved her yellow jacket. Yes, and she, and she smelled very good and her name was Kim. When did you first act on? I was 19 years old. Oh, yeah? Yes. With someone you knew? No. No? No. Oh, Met him yeah. at the beach and... And Do you know anyone uh, like you in your small town? Anyone that you thought was gay? Anyone that you thought would be okay with it? Did not. I did not know anybody. No family members, no friends that you suspected? No, no. I was so... so on my own with these feelings and curiosities. Okay. I was very sheltered and I was always kind of alone, you know, I would do my, I was always in the corner or I was out doing my own thing, playing with whatever, but it's like I didn't, I just had no idea, I had no idea who anybody else was except me. I didn't know anybody else. What would you do to like kind of get away from the small town city? Would you do anything? Well, as soon as I got my license, I mean, it's, that was like a freedom card because I You was, could go anywhere. I was able to... When you to, got that license, you could go anywhere. Oh, yes. When I, when I was 16 and I fired up that big old Buick <laughs> that I had, my first car, I asked my father, I said, how do I get to Saugatuck? And he told me. Which is a gay city gay, in Michigan. A gay little town yeah. on, the, on Lake Michigan. And I went to the gay. beach. I found the beach. Okay. I found Oval Beach. And I um, remember parking my car and walking back into the sand dunes and I met, I met some guy and I was so curious. But then also I met someone in the parking lot and I went into his car and talked to him because I was so, so curious so, yeah. and I wasn't too shy <laughs> yeah. actually. I was it's so good. curious. It's good. I was so curious. I so had so it was many kind of a, um, a release. 
Yes, but I also, but I also, I would also go to, I actually went to rest stops. I went to rest stops on the, on the, on the highway, because I heard about that. And I, <laughs> That's all, true. Yes, it's so true. That's it's, true. It really is true. <laughs> all this time, I've never thought that yes, was true. Yes, it's really never. True. I really went, I really went. People I, really go there. Yes, I, I was like, I was like, I went. And I found people there. I mean, I did. And I mean, it was a cruising area. It was called, it's cruising. And would you knock on the door? How, no. how does that work? Wow, that's just, it's just like, um, you just see someone. I would park my car, I would go in, and then just, you know, it's like you're going to the bathroom, and then it's like, hmm. And then and then you go back to your car and you and you sit in your car and then you just kind of see who's going in, who's coming out, and then you just kind of know. I'm like, hmm, I'm thinking that one or I that. Never, yes, and ever thought that was real. It's well, at least it was when I yeah. was when I was probably eighteen or nineteen. It was. And I, I, I never thought that was true. It was, yes, it's really true. People, you want to be around people that were yes, more like and you. Just, and just, I was so curious. I was so curious. I had to... And there used to be a bookstore called Sons and Daughters, and mm -hmm. I would go there, too. And that was a great little bookstore. It's too bad that Grand Rapids does not have that anymore, because that I met a lot of good people there. But I, I mean, the first guy I met at, in the dunes... I saw him and I ran, I ran away from him because it was too much for it's me at the time. Too it was, scary. Wow, it was way too much, but that was my first meeting and I, I met him and I ran away from him. And yeah, so, but I, you know. What was your feelings after your first encounter with another guy? My first encounter, the first time I actually acted on my feelings, right. I just was like, Yes, for sure I am. And I'm like, you knew wow. Automatically. It was like, wow. It was like to feel man flesh, yeah. to feel <laughs> to feel their body close to mine, everything. It was like, wow. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the first person you told? My cousin. Why did you go to her? Did you feel safe with her? Did you, I, did you feel comfortable with her? I used to, I used to babysit her kids. Mm -hmm. I used to do so, and we, we just knew each other so yeah. well. Was she around your age? Yeah, um, a little bit older, older, but I knew, you know, I could... You know, she, I knew she was going to love she you. She would be and there like, for okay. me, and I had her support. Yeah. I knew that, so... And it's always good to tell a family member before. Yes. Or a friend, a close yes. friend, yes. for you to have some kind of support system before coming out to your parents. So, from the time you told your, your cousin, when did you tell your parents? I would say about a year. A year after that? Nah, just, just under a year, basically. Okay. Just under a year, because it was bothering me. I, would t I told my cousin, and then I told a couple close friends, mm -hmm. and more, the more people I told, the more strength I grew. Okay. And I just like, this has to be come out of me. Yeah. I can't stand it anymore. So I I told them. What and was that day like? Oh, it was very um boy, it was it was kind of nervous. Mm -hmm. It was exciting. It was a ton of emotions. Um I think you told us it was It was a, but, it but was on once a it was out, but once it was out, it was like, wow, what a release. What a release. What what a burden off my off shoulders. Your shoulders. And it felt good. Felt great. Felt good it to release felt, it. It felt, felt amazing. Good to release it was it to like the universe. it was like hello. It's like it's I'm like it's not I'm I'm not dealing with it anymore. You can deal with it because I am who I am. That's good. So, it's a good feeling to see. Oh, that. what and it's still I, I know who I am. Yes, I know it, who I want yes, to be. Yeah. And it's like when I tell this story, it's. It's still a wonderful feeling when I tell it because it's like I still kind of feel that when I tell it again because it's like what a relief. And I think you told us that it was on a Sunday. And it's on a Sunday, Sunday, correct? A church day. Oh, of, of course. all days. And I was very, grew up very <laughs> religious, and I was yes, very religious, and I'm like, I, I, you know, it was very predictable how my parents were going to react, but I was actually impressed with my parents how they 
reacted. I, th I, I was very scared that they might disown yeah. me because I was very born and raised very religious, but they were so accepting. Supportive. And they're like, we love you regardless. We don't understand this, but we love you regardless. So that's beautiful, you know. Yeah, I'm and so it blessed. spread through your family that whole day. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was like, and there was a lot of tears yeah. shed on their yeah. behalf. They were crying, and I'm, you know, and we've talked... I had to tell my sisters individually on the phone, and they were crying, but I told them all. And then it I felt said, good. Yeah, it, it felt good, and it's like there was no going back. After I, it came out of my mouth, there was no going back to say, you know, whatever, the, no matter how many tears they were shedding, yeah. I was out, and I was like, I'm not going back in. This is who I am. You better deal with That's it. That's good. That's so. good. Good. <laughs> counseling. I went to counseling. You went to your ministry. And yes, the, the whole counseling experience was like, I went in there and I'm like, I'm here because my parents want me to be here. I said, I came out that I was gay and I said, I know who I am, blah, blah, blah. And we talked for an hour and it was actually a wonderful conversation we had. And I came home, I drove home and I said, Mother, I'm glad you t told me that to go to counseling because... The man says, I know who I am, and I'm totally gay. I said, it's, it's, you got to deal with it now. And she was like, well, that backfired. I'm like, I said, I'm gay, deal with it. So I'm like, so you knew who you yeah, were. You he, my, the counselor said, you know exactly who you are. <laughs> yes. And then when I met with the minister, it was kind of nerve-wracking, but it's like, actually, we, him and I had a very good conversation, too, and I told him, I'm like, and then he wanted to, me to meet in front of the consistory or the church elders and deacons and mm -hmm. the, the, the officers of the church. And I said, no, I'm not doing that. I came to you. I sat down with you. I'm not going to meet in front of all the church officials because I, I am who I am. And I said, if you have to excommunicate me, you go right ahead and do it. So, so after coming out to your family, did you have any faith that it was going to get better? Faith keeping in mind is being able to take the next step without knowing what's going to happen next. Did you have that kind of faith? For more of the Brian Board interview, watch part two.